Okay, I wanted to create a series of videos to supplement some of the uh, setup guides that I posted to my PFSense blog at pfsensesetup.com. So this, this is going to be the first in that series of videos, and this first video is going to show you how to configure the WAN settings using the PFSense web interface. And in order to get to the web interface, first we'll type in the IP address of the PFSense box, which in this case is 192.168.1.30. The default is 192.168.1.1, but I changed it because I already had a router that has that IP address. So I'm going to enter the username and password here, click the login button, and log in, and we're at the PFSense dashboard now. And we want to configure WAN settings, so we're going to browse using the, the menu at the top. We're going to browse to Interfaces WAN and click on that. And that will take us to the WAN settings page. And uh, I will enlarge this so this is a little bit easier to see. And we're going to start with general configuration. First, there's the enable interface checkbox, which we want to keep checked, otherwise, it won't be enabled and then there's description and we can just type in WAN which is what is typed what, what is typed in already uh, there's type of interface and there's a number of different options here there's none for no type static for static IP DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol which is probably what we want to leave it set as because in most cases you will get your, your WAN IP address from your ISP's DHCP server. So you want to have it set at DHCP in that case. But there are some other options here. PPP point-to-point -point protocol is a protocol used by a lot of dial-up providers. So if you're on dial-up, you probably want to have it as uh, PPP. PPPoE is point point-to-point -point protocol over Ethernet which a lot of DSL providers use so if you're on DSL you may be using this and let's see there's two other options here PPTP point-to-point -point tunneling protocol and L2TP layer 2 tunneling protocol and these are two protocols used for VPNs virtual private network so uh, if you're setting up a VPN, you might be using these, but we're not setting up a, a VPN right now, so we'll uh, keep it at DHCP right now. And here's a, a field for MAC address. Now, this is interesting. And this is, um, in, if you type in a, a MAC address in here into this box, you can do MAC address spoofing. And... The reason why this is valuable is, is that DHCP servers are often configured for static DHCP, which means that it will remember a MAC address, and if a network interface goes offline and then comes back online, it will assign it the same IP address that it had before. Well, this is useful in a lot of cases, but sometimes you want your ISP to issue you a different MAC address, a, a different IP address for whatever reason. And the if you type in a, a MAC address in here, you can accomplish that because then it will see a different MAC address and it'll, it will it will force the DHCP server of your ISP provider to hand out a different IP address. And two more settings here, MTUs, maximum transmission unit, you can change it uh, by typing in a number in here and obviously larger numbers will achieve somewhat more efficiency because there will be less uh, packet overhead but there will be more latency because it will take, it will tie up the connection for that much longer and then maximum segment size uses it operates on the same principle but for TCP connections okay I'm running out of time here so I'll cover the rest in a future video